Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Unschooling Lifestyle. Today, I have my dear, dear, dear friend, Annie Yeoman. And Annie and I met during the pandemic. When during the pandemic, we went to, um, you know, like, I went into like all homeschool related. So I attended every group that I could. And Annie was one of the people that I met along with our friend, Christina, who for a while, when Christina lived here in Michigan, we were kind of like a trio and I love them dearly. And Annie uh, recently moved up, moved up North and she started a homestead and she has the most amazing stories about chickens <laughs> <laughs> about dogs and about pigs and the most beautiful, beautiful family. And I love them all dearly. So we're going to talk to Annie about all of that. So welcome, Annie. And thank, thank you, you for being here. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself so people can get yeah. to know you better? Yes. So I actually am living now where I grew up. This is my family home. Um, okay. I lived here until I was 18. Then I couldn't wait to leave the country. I couldn't wait to leave up north and get to the city. I was a city girl. I wanted to be a city girl. I never mm -hmm. wanted to live, you know, back in the country. Uh, my husband and I met. We started dating. We moved to Las Vegas. We moved back to the Detroit area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, along the way, we got married. We had four children. Mm, so I, I have love four them. boys. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> and they're great. Um, yes. And then we moved, we settled down back into, into the Detroit area in Clinton Township. Mm -hmm. And um, we were perfectly content to stay there. Everything was fine. But um, once we settled into our house, I started gardening. I got mm -hmm. the idea to start a garden and my garden took off and it got huge that year. And it was so exciting. And I just kept planting and harvesting and it was, it kind that. of, yeah, it was beautiful. And it kind of lit up, lit a fire in me. Yeah. And um, from there, I started learning more about being more self-sufficient, growing your own mm -hmm. food, yes. um, you know, raising animals, just doing things on a healthier level on your own, mm -hmm. rather than just being dependent on a grocery store, going there, yes. buying your food. Yes. Um, my older sister had chickens and ducks and turkeys and all of this stuff going on. And um, my little sister lived up here mm -hmm. and she also had had some animals and was gardening and things like that over the years. Um, so I, I was interested in it, but I living in Clinton mm -hmm. Township, you really kind of limited on what you can do. So I had the garden. Then I started to explore animals. The only thing you could really have there chickens chickens and you could yes. only have four chickens you could have four chickens so <laughs> that, my, that just um, seems so limited you know it, yeah it's it's a great start I mean it's great to start to get mm -hmm. started four chickens will give you three to four eggs a day which mm -hmm. is fine um and I loved them my sister actually hatched them and oh. raised them up and brought them to me and my husband bought me a coop for I think my birthday and just a small coop a and <laughs> that That's was my awful. birthday gift. I love yeah. that. I love that. <laughs> and yeah, we put them in the backyard and the kids and I just mm -hmm. went crazy. We were watching them all summer long. They started laying eggs. It was just so exciting yes, all the time. Yes. Um, so and that it, was about what we could do. Yeah. And I love what you said about um, starting to explore about how being self being self sufficient and not being dependent on the grocery store, though, because during the pandemic, yeah. I think we all faced that, that, you know, there were times that were like food shortages and and all of a sudden, if you didn't have that, you couldn't get it. And then you guys, you know, during that transition or in that time during the pandemic, that's when you started homeschooling too, right? Was it, or was yeah. it before? Yeah. Did you ever think about no. that before? No. So I never really thought about homeschooling until the pandemic. Um, I thought it was a great concept. I just mm -hmm. didn't think I could do it. Yeah. Um, previously I worked full time. So it was off the table when I became a stay at home mom, the kids had just started getting into school and they were settling yeah. in and, you know, it was pick up and drop off and run them around and do all these different things. And that's yeah. just kind of how it was once the pandemic happened and they were going to virtual learning. Mm -hmm. Um, when the schools closed and I had to have, I was supposed to have a kindergartner and a second grader on a laptop 
for eight wow. hours a day. Oh my God. I, I said, no, I can't, this isn't going to work. There's, there's mm-hmm. no way. And so mm-hmm. we kind of barely finished out that year. And in the fall, when our district said they were going to be be virtual again. I said, forget it. We're just going to homeschool. And I'm so glad I did because it was, we continued that year and then the next year. And it was like the best, the best yeah. times we, we loved it. Um, and we met you and we met I Christina know. and so mm-hmm. many other great and so people. many other people. Yes. And you guys yeah. were doing a lot of garden because I remember when we visited yeah. your house, like there were, the kids were always like in the backyard and getting their yeah. hands dirty. And, yeah. you know, it was just a, such an amazing, you know, like feeling to see that, like the connection and stuff like that though. So what was that like for the, for the kids? They just, they just took right in, right. To be home and, that- and everything. Younger kids, that's the beauty of, of their mm-hmm. minds are so open to anything. You yeah. you can present them with something that's so exciting, like planting seeds and putting yeah. a little water on some dirt with a seed in it. And mm-hmm. it starts growing in days and they just to watch that and then put it in the ground and watch it get enormous and start producing vegetables. It's, it's magic, you know, it's, it's magic so for fun. them. And they yeah. eat, um, and they eat a lot, a lot differently, right? When you, when you produce your own food. Yes. Yes. The, my, my favorite is my second son, Grant. He would help me cut kale. So mm-hmm. we had, had these massive kale plants and he would go out to the garden with a pair of scissors and a bowl and I'd watch him and he would cut the kale and then he'd just start eating it right out of the oh, garden. I love that. And you can't get kids to eat no. kale. You no, know, if I bought he... kale, mm-hmm. they would, there's no way. There's but, no way. Yeah, <laughs> picking it, he would, he would just eat kale all, all day long. I love that. It. I love that. So what, um, so as you know, you're doing all of this, but you're very limited. So is that what got you started to thinking about moving back up North, the limitations well, of the city? It was actually a movie. I watched a movie. Do one tell, day. Andy. <laughs> and it's a documentary and it's called the biggest little farm. And oh, I'm not yes. sure. Yeah, I'm not it. sure where you can find it right now, but something that just, yes. I was already thinking, you know, I, I love the chickens. Mm-hmm. I love the garden. We watched this movie and it, it was so inspiring. It was yes. just amazing. And they end up with a massive, massive farm yes. and orchard and all of that. And I don't, mm. I don't know that that's even what I want in the future or if I'll ever get there, but it was really cool to see a couple start in a city, in an apartment, mm-hmm with really no way of, of living this lifestyle, but then they did, they did live Mm -hmm. it. And, Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to do that. I wanted to do that. So we started looking at property a little farther out, um, from where we were, where we could, we could have animals, we could have, um, a larger garden, we could plant more. Um, we'd have a couple of acres. Mm -hmm. The problem was in that area, um, you know, we were looking at Armada, Romeo, okay. um, farther out, uh, you know, New Haven, places like that. The problem is the price. We could not oh. afford to buy the, you know, five or six acres in that area. Mm-hmm. It, it, and the price is astronomical. Yes. And so it was kind of a done deal. We were like, well, until we can afford that, we're going to have to just stay here. Stay here. Um, yeah. And then everything kind of changed after my dad passed away. So my dad passed away and, um, you know, we were coming up North a lot to be with my mom and my mom was coming down a lot to be with us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, where I grew up up here, there's, my mom has a a large house and there's a lot of acreage here. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it's, uh, 55 acres connecting that my mom is on. And, um, you know, we started talking about my husband brought up, you know, eventually we're probably going to end up up here anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, why don't we talk to your mom and see if she would be interested in having us come up? We can sell the house. We can put the money that we're, we're spending in our house here into her house Mm -hmm. and help her out, be there, you know, if she Mm -hmm. needs us. And then we'll have the property and the area to kind of live mm-hmm. this dream that we're talking about. And so it was a lot of back and forth and we, yes. it was not an easy decision on anyone's part because that's, there's a lot of things that go into that, mm-hmm. but um, ultimately that's what, that's what we did. And so we listed the house and we packed up and moved the kids up here. And then 
going into the homeschooling um, downstate, it, it was it was great homeschooling up here. It was it's a totally different, different yes. yeah, mm -hmm. story because it's it's really rural where we are. Mm -hmm. And um, I was used to having a really great homeschooling community around me mm -hmm. and lots of activities close by where the kids could, could go to everything, museums mm -hmm. and meetups and all of that up here. It's not, not, not really that easy. Everything yeah. is, about, is an hour away. We, my yes. husband and I joke, everything's an hour away. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But and, I, I, but I love that. So the kid, you know, so the kids went back to school and I really mm -hmm. like to, you know, to make a, a like a great, not a great point, but I, in my mind, I think it's a great point is that, you know, unschooling, homeschooling, it sometimes works for your family, but sometimes you don't have to be in this particular setup to make those connections with your children, which is ultimately, I right. think it goes beyond just the education aspect. And whatever works for your family, you know, you may be homeschooling for a year or two, like Annie did, and then maybe they go back to school and that's okay. You know, yeah. it's just as long as you're all connected and being authentic to yourself, I think that's what really, really makes it work. So absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And we spend, a, like, I spend, you know, they're at school during the day, but mm -hmm. when they're home, we spend every minute together doing together. stuff you know yes. sometimes they're hanging out but we're always here I'm still always here mm -hmm. they're always around um everything that happens around here with with the animals with the farm mm -hmm. they're a part of it um they're so excited about all of it you know and they help they know what to do they're learning how to take care of the animals how to mm -hmm. feed them how you know what to do yes. what not to do so they're they're a huge part of it all and they but they still have um, you know, there's, they're having a public school education, but it's also a different, it's a different experience here. Mm -hmm. It's a yes. much smaller community. It's really, um, close knit. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're not just a random face in the hallway. Everybody mm -hmm. knows them. The kids all know each other. The teachers yes. know all the kids. Um, it's, it's, it's a totally different feel as well. They're, so they're what you went through in Clinton township, right? Yes, exactly. Yes that is and there's nothing wrong with with the mm -hmm. school district there other than it I didn't like that it felt so disconnected that mm -hmm. you know I kind of just felt like we were just one of the numbers mm -hmm. in as far as you know there was nobody that really wanted to take the time to know my children mm -hmm. well and I feel that's so, so different here Everybody mm -hmm. wants to know, wants to know your yes. children here. They, they want to be invested in their future. They want to watch them grow up. And that's a big difference. Yeah. And they're so amazing though, because I have had great conversations with, you know, with Truman, your oldest, and I, I'm telling you, he knew, he knew so much about chickens, you know, and <laughs> butterflies and we had this amazing conversations and you know yes. the boys play together and um and I just love what they had they were always just so so just so free right and um it's been amazing um knowing you and we visited once let me tell you and I was telling Annie that I am saving my egg cartons because I'm going up there to get eggs <laughs> Because her chickens are simply amazing. Can you talk about your chickens, Annie? I mean, because I never knew. I never knew there was such, um, they had such personalities. And yeah. what, um, what, I mean, did you, did you, did you, did you guys had chickens growing up when you were, you know, when you lived there first? So when I was a kid, we did, we had one flock of chickens. So it was okay. interesting because in my mind, for a long time, I thought, you know, we had chickens my whole childhood, but we really oh. didn't. We okay. had one flock of chickens okay. and we used some of them for meat. Okay. So some of them were butchered mm -hmm. and then the rest we just kept for eggs and we had one rooster okay. and um, a lot of hens and one rooster. And this rooster, his name was Fred <laughs> and he was really mean. He was terrible. <laughs> we were afraid that. of him. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Awful. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But then over time, um, you know, just, just a fact of having small animals on a farm, they're, they're, they sometimes get eaten They by, you know, predators, yeah. they mm -hmm. get out, things yeah. happen, they get injured, they die. So um, eventually our flock of chickens dwindled down and I, and Fred 
was taken. We don't know who got him, but somebody got him. Somebody got him. um, Oh, poor Fred. And then not really. I I wasn't sad. And then, (laughs) um, (laughs) and then my parents never got any more chickens. That was it. That was just the end. But, um, I didn't realize as a kid how funny they were. They, you know, we would just get eggs and fight Fred off and try to Mm -hmm. keep him away from us while we got the eggs. And that was it. Well, now having these chickens, I can stay out there for hours and just watch them. They're hilarious. (laughs) They have funny interactions with each other. They have a definite um, hierarchy. They Mm -hmm. figure out who's, who's in charge and who's not. Um, even, even the, especially the roosters, you know, okay. we, there's three roosters around here right now. Okay. Uh, two of them are my sisters and, okay. and we separated our rooster because he was getting picked on so bad. Oh. So they have, they have this whole society of their own and that is some hilarious are friendly. Oh yeah. They're so funny. Some of them are friendly. Some of them are skittish. Some of them are bullies. Some of them, you know, really go far and wide. They'll end up at way out in the field. Some of them stay close. They hide their eggs. Sometimes we find <laughs> random eggs, different places that we'll collect. That They're is hilarious. hilarious. They're funny. Oh my yeah. goodness. I know. And you just got yeah. a new chicken coop, right? Yes. Yes, oh, please do talk about my, it's, too. it looks so big. I saw some pictures and maybe yeah. Annie will share some pictures with us, but, um, so yeah. how many, how many chickens can you have in the, in the chicken coop right now? So I, we, we're going to, ha- I think this chicken coop, they say can hold about 20. Okay. Um, in my experience, you can always kind of fit a few more in there. They tend to bunch together. They don't, when they're in the coop they're you, it's at night, they're, okay. they're in there the hens go in to lay eggs and they come back out, but they don't really hang out in the coop. They're usually out and about. Okay, so okay. you can fit a few more in there than what they say, but this coop is six by 12, I believe I okay. got. So it's, it's a big one. And uh, I, so I didn't want to have to buy another one. This is okay. going to be it. This is going to be so our this is it. for so Never, Mike, yes. so w- wait a minute. So you're saying Mike's not going to bail that, that chicken city that I sent you on, on that picture I sent you. <laughs> he said, no, he said no right away. <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious. I mean, there was this picture of like this, like buildings, you know, and there were chicken coops. So it was like this, <laughs> this city for chickens and the husband had built this for the wife. And um, I mean, I thought it was just perfect. I love I that. I love that, but he said no. <laughs> he said no. Okay, Mike. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, thanks for nothing. <laughs> yes. So, but I want, you know, but this is, again, like you started with four, you know, yeah. right? Like in the city. So, uh, you know, so now you have, how many do you have 17. right now? Have so 17. You, from four to 17 and all of yeah. that you learn in that, in that, you know, in that time of getting to 17, that just, yeah. you know, that's amazing. Well, the big, the newest, um, you know, experience with the chickens was we got actual baby chicks. Now our first four chickens that my sister brought were already mm-hmm. pretty big. They were already yes. almost laying eggs. Mm-hmm. Well, this was exciting to get these little tiny chicks and have to keep yes. them under heat and monitor them so closely. That was a learning experience. You have to, yes. you actually have to check their butts and wipe their oh. butts for them and make oh, sure. Oh, no kidding. What? Say yeah. what again? So yes. that just, you know, they're just like our babies, right? When we have yes. to really care yes. for them. Okay. Okay. Yes. Oh, and wow. Sure they seem like they're always trying to kill themselves. They're so fragile and tiny and they're doing crazy stuff. They're getting stuck in places. You have to baby proof the brooder and make sure that they're safe and healthy. It's, it was a harrowing oh, experience. Oh, my goodness. But, that is crazy. But, but you guys- now they're big and then what happened to um can you tell us about the the story of the baby chick that was like dead but then came back to life yes so we my son went down um one morning i had the chicks and a brooder in the basement inside Mm -hmm. because it was still really cold um so i had them down but you don't want chicks in your house they they smell pretty bad and they're loud and you know so we had them down in the basement and um my son went down to check and he came up and said, mom, I think there's a dead chick. 
And mm. I said, okay. So I threw my boots on and went down and he had pulled it out and set it down on top of a tote that was there. And it, it looked, it was completely dead. It looked dead. Oh, wow. And I said, oh, geez. And there was another one in there that looked a little lethargic. So I picked up the dead chick in one hand and I was moving the lethargic chick under the light a little more with the other hand. And mm -hmm. I felt this dead chick move just a tiny bit. And I thought, Oh, maybe it's not completely dead. Completely let's, dead. let's try to save it. <laughs> yeah, yes, let's like try to save dead. it. Yeah, so we came upstairs and we, um, I started, you know, holding it and was rubbing it and getting it warmed up. And I took a towel and soaked it in hot water and put it in a Ziploc bag to make kind of like a heating mm -hmm. pad. And mm -hmm. I wrapped that around the chick and we sat and just massaged this chick and kept <gasps> it warm. And it came back to life. It's eyes open. Oh it goodness. stood up. I couldn't believe it. I could, I've never seen anything like it. And, um, after about an hour, it was peeping and moving around and we put it back in and it survived. It's outside right now with the rest of them completely healthy and fine. No kidding. What a yeah. crazy, I mean, what a beautiful experience to have had that, you know, like, yeah. uh, it's just amazing what, what animals can do, you know, and what, I guess what everyone can do with a little bit of love and support yeah. and yeah, just and like, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, that's so beautiful. So what yeah. else do you guys, what else do you guys have? So we have, we listen to me, like I live there already. I, <laughs> I mean, no to self, Annie, I do want to have a little something over there because I love it. <laughs> Um, but what else do you have? So you have chickens and then what, the uh, so what was it? So it was the chickens. You moved up there with the chickens, right? And then what was the first project after that? So we, we actually lost three of our yes. chickens when we lived in Clinton township. Oh, so, so you only moved with one. We only had our one chicken when we moved up here and we integrated her with my sister's flock. And then um, my sister was living here at the time and her flock is still here. She moved and bought a house, but she hasn't with the weather and the timing and mm -hmm. she hasn't been able to move her um, chickens yet. So we have them here too. Um, but we only moved with the one. Chicken. And that was, that was interesting, right? Because they did not accept her right away. Right. No, it was a really, it was a really sad road. Oh, <laughs> but no. They, they're fine now. But when you have one bird and you're trying to move her into an already established flock, it's really hard. When you have multiple birds and you put them together, it, it works out much easier. And that's what our next um, experience was because my friend um, in Madison Heights, mm -hmm. um, a lady I used to work with, Chris, she had chickens and she could not keep them anymore. Um, life had gotten busy and crazy. Mm -hmm. And she asked if I would uh, be interested in adopting her flock. Okay. And I said, yes. And I drove down and got her um, birds and brought them up. And so then my flock went from one to seven and um, we had, we took her, her chickens. Oh, uh, Yeah. And she was so sweet. She gave me her um, chicken run that she had been using like the metal okay. um, structure which I'm okay. putting together to use now mm -hmm. and um, all of her stuff she gave me waters and feeders and everything yeah. it was so sweet and she was sad to see her birds go she just didn't have time to dedicate to them so that's um, so thoughtful of her to yeah. you know so we ended up with seven um, hens. And then my sister gave me the, her one rooster who was mm -hmm. getting picked on. And so he's been with mine and then we got the 10 chicks. So, yeah. So wow. we grew pretty quickly with the chickens. Okay. And, uh, the next on the list was our bunnies. We okay, got the bunnies. three bunnies. Okay. Yep. And, um, so a lot of people, you know, don't realize that you can eat rabbits Mm -hmm. and you can raise them for meat and it's actually really nutritious and healthy um meat and a lot of people have a hard time with it but yes that's, that's, the purpose of our rabbits is to is to breed meat meat rabbits so we okay. have our breeders and then any of their babies will will grow out and okay process those. okay yeah. now <laughs> what does the, i never had i've never had rabbit um, mm -hmm. I know in Mexico, you know, like North Mexico, that's where I'm from. It's very common for people to eat that, like, you know, not necessarily in the city, but I think my dad probably has had rabbit before. So what does that taste yeah. like? 
it's really, I know what everybody says, you know, everything tastes like chicken, but rabbit really does. It's an all white meat. It's really okay. mild. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's actually got more protein and less calories than chicken. Oh, it's wow. Very, yeah. It's very easily um, digested. It's, it's a really great protein source. So wow. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, this may be a little bit too much for some people. So maybe I'll put a disclaimer. So you have, how do you know the meat rabbits are ready to be, to be butcher, I guess? So typically you want to wait until they reach at least five pounds. Okay. So you'll, you'll weigh them. And then once they hit five pounds, then you, you would process them. Oh, process them. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I butcher, butcher them, process them either way. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. and then do you, um, I, do you do, who do you take that? Be, um, who do you take them to, to be processed? Let's use the right terminology here. Here. So the rabbits I'll process myself. You because will? They're, yes. Cause they're small and you're able to do it pretty quickly just right here. So, okay. um, yes. Now the larger animals, which we'll get, we're getting to, but we also got two pigs. Okay. Now the the pigs, they will go to, um, they will go to the butcher to, Mm -hmm, to be, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I have no experience with larger animals, uh, like that. And pigs are difficult to. Yes. I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard. Um, and I, well, I read, you know, I read Anthony Bourdain's, uh, one of Anthony Bourdain's book, but he talks about that. And when he visited Portugal, like he was in Portugal and that was, you know, they had raised a pig and he, um, he does, he has, he has, he's a very, he was, he was a very, uh, descriptive writer. Like I loved his writing and yours is actually pretty similar to his because I love how you can paint the picture of what's oh. happening, but not just the picture. There's a feeling. So there's the picture, there's the feeling, and then there's almost you can like feel yourself being there because it's so Aww. beautiful but um That's so a but wonderful compliment thank oh, you oh <laughs> you're so sweet I love you I love your writing I love your words uh but Anthony Bourdain's was kind of like that and he describes it and I think I remember being in Mexico and being almost like maybe seven or eight and I remember that um and then they're pretty I think they're pretty noisy like the noise is what gets a lot of people I think so yeah yeah yeah. it's it yeah that I maybe maybe way down later in the The future I'll Mm -hmm. I'll have the setup and be able to really you know do everything on my own like that Mm -hmm. but for now I have to start I want to start small with Mm -hmm. that end Mm -hmm. of things and I just I just love that so now we have we have chickens we have uh uh, rabbits, right? Bunny yep. rabbits. And yep. then we have pigs. How many do, yep. how many do we have? I have two pigs now. Um, okay. I hope possibly I might end up adding a couple more later. It just depends on what I can do with fencing and, um, where to put them. So okay. that's, that's, there's a lot that goes into thinking about where everybody is and where to go. You have to okay. be able to get them water. You have to be able to, you know, easily access the pigs and, um, this was a learning experience with the pigs because the breed of pig that I got is a, is a pasture pig. And so they're supposed to be grazing pigs. Well, I didn't pay attention. I got too excited to the ad that I found uh, for these pigs. And I didn't realize they were crossed with a very uh, prolific rooting style of pig. And so these pigs have rooted up the ground. (laughs) So, oh oh, yeah. Oh yes. my goodness. They are like rototillers. So their whole area that they've been in, they have it completely rooted up. And so I was a little surprised by that and I didn't plan for that. Okay. But now that now that they've done it, I'm I'm okay with it. I'm just gonna move them and have them rooted up and I'm gonna go be- behind them and plant the garden. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. that. I love that. That is yeah. so amazing. Yeah, um, so I let them do the work and rooting, rooting everything up and then I'll just plant. So, wow. That, and how long does, how long does the pig takes to be ready to be processed? Eight to 10 months, eight okay. to 10 months. So I called and set the appointment for them, um, in October. So October 12th, 
Mm-hmm. I'll take them to the butcher. Mm-hmm. They'll unload them for me and I'll leave them there. And they will call me when the meat's ready to pick up. Okay. So, and it takes, they said it'll take about four weeks for the meat to be ready because mm-hmm. they will smoke, smoke the bacon, smoke the hams, okay. do all of it. Yeah. Wow. So, and yes. how is this, um, how is the relationship between the animals and the, and the, you know, and the boys like, um, uh, because they know, right. That they know that all of yeah. that, all of that is for, it's for, um, you know, personal consumption and yeah. to help to help your family and, and stuff like that. So how do they, uh, I don't, I don't want to say handle, but how, how, what is their process on so- thinking about this? We've talked a lot about this and, um, I'm hoping that when it comes time, I'm sure that it will be sad and it should be a little bit sad. Of course Mm -hmm. you develop a relationship with these animals. And if you felt, if you felt nothing, that would be problematic. I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they do know that there are certain animals that are going to be coming here that they can treat as pets. Mm -hmm. That's our breeding stock. Our egg layer chickens, our ducks that lay eggs, those are all going to stay here. They're going to be, those will be their pet animals. Mm -hmm. The rest, they know these are not our pets. They're here to, um, you know, to sustain us. That's that's their purpose. That's why we have them. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the baby rabbits that will be coming soon after they grow up and they're gone, that's, you know, that is what it is that's what their purpose is that's why they're Mm -hmm. here uh same thing for any meat chickens we do in the future and the pigs and any other animals that um you know i i some people want to run a petting farm and that's their goal and they Mm -hmm. acquire lots of animals that are always going to live on the farm and they'll enjoy them Mm -hmm. as pets that's that wasn't the goal here Mm -hmm. that's not what um Mm -hmm. my goals are it's it's Mm -hmm. to fill our freezers help take care of our family Mm -hmm. feed our family Mm -hmm. um if there's extra then great we can maybe sell that and help offset the cost of feeding these animals but we're not running a petting farm that's you know and that's what we've explained to the kids and um they so far they seem on board they seem fine they understand uh we haven't gotten down to where we've really had to process any animals yet where they've had to face it face it when, yet. yes where they had to go through it though but yes. um that is that is fantastic because those conversations should always be have you know and when that is happening you know like I love that you're like you guys are talking about it but there's no yes. like more or less than what's needed in that particular moment right right it's just, exactly it's just what yeah. you need mm-hmm Well, and it's also, I think it's important for kids to know where your food comes from because Mm -hmm. that's kind of something that's lost right now, right? We take our kids to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. They, they buy pork chops that are in cellophane and chicken Mm -hmm. that's in cellophane Mm -hmm. and, um, their hamburger is, is wrapped up Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and dyed pink and they don't realize that these, these meats come from animals. It's just, that's yes. where you buy chicken is from the grocery store. It's so from the grocery store, yeah. Yeah. When when I think when kids see that, you know, you can raise animals mm-hmm. and this is where your food comes from and what goes into it, the cost, yes. the work, the effort. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's just a healthier relationship with with food. Yes. Across yes. the board. Yes, because you know, you know how that happens though. And that's so interesting. You mentioned that because we just had that um we made um in Mexico we have this breakfast tacos, it's called barbacoa. And barbacoa, you know, we went to the meat market and bought the bu- bought the meat and then we we prepped that, you know. But Anthony was so has been so involved in the in the cooking that he was like, Oh, I want to help you do it. So we went through the whole process. But definitely, you know, but he has always had the barbacoa, like the end result, right? And he always yeah. liked it. And, <laughs> but when he saw the whole process, he was like, I didn't realize it took that long. And he, because it was, oh. in the, it was in the crock, but that long, you know, it was in the crock, but all night, he said, I didn't realize, you know, like the part of the cow that, that the type of barbacoa, you know, where that came from. So seeing that and, in handling the the raw meat 
you know, he, he made him, he made, he thought about that. He's like, oh, this is where this come from. And then he got up in the morning and checked the meat and, and then we like cut it, you know, and then I prepare it and he still had it. He said, I like barbacoa. I don't think I like cooking barbacoa. And I was like, that's, <laughs> you know, that's totally okay. It, but now, yeah. you know, now you know where it comes from, you know, like maybe you perhaps, perhaps you are not into handling raw meat. That's okay. You can, yeah. I'm like, you can try bacon. He's like, yeah, maybe I'll try that. So, um, <laughs> but is that, is that knowledge that you know where things come yeah. from, right? Yeah. And that is the most beautiful, um, you know, that is the beautiful aspect of it. So, yeah. um, and then what else do you have? So chickens, pigs, bunnies, um, and the ducks. That, that, yes. Can we talk the about ducks. them? Because I don't know anything about ducks. Can we talk about I, them? I don't either, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so the ducks were kind of a whim. I um on I'm on all these different hobby farm Facebook pages and okay. I follow all this stuff. And this girl posted that she had it's kind of funny, she had gone to Tractor Supply and uh -huh. they were trying to get rid of the rest of their ducks. And so they she thought she was gonna buy all these ducks and then her family members would want them. Okay. And she could divide them up amongst her family members and they would want them. And so she got a great deal on these ducks and she took home like 30. Oh ducks. my goodness. <laughs> I mean, that, yes. I mean, anything in quantity of 30, you guys, that doesn't sound good at all. I mean, doesn't matter no, what it is, you know? Yes, I yes. agree. So what does, it, so what happened? Well, she brought the ducks home and then none of her family members wanted them. Of course. Nobody, I'm... nobody had the setup. I bought a <laughs> oh, that's terrible that's terrible Pobrecita. okay so nobody wanted them so she kept them she said, no she said i have to get rid of these ducks i can't oh. keep 30 ducks so she was keeping 10 okay she was keeping her 10 ducks and she put this post up hey if anybody wants ducks uh she said i can't tell them apart i have some indian runner ducks and i have some pecan ducks but i don't know who is who uh, but if you take if you come get 10 or more of them. I'll give you a great deal. And okay. so I thought, well, my chicks are getting big. They don't require as much help. Maybe I should get some ducks and <laughs> okay, I'm going to do it. So I messaged her and she said, yeah, sure. Come. I have 10 left. I said, okay, I'll take them. And she sold them to me for a dollar a piece. And so okay. it was $10 for 10 ducks. Okay. And I thought, okay, well, if I mess them up, you know, at least I'm, you know, I didn't make this huge investment. Yeah. I already had, I already had the heat lights. I already had everything from the chicks. So the kids and I hopped in the car and we went and picked up these ducks. And she said, I think all that is left are the Indian runner ducks. Okay. And I said, I, okay, now those types of ducks stand upright and they almost look like little penguins okay. and they don't, yeah, they're cute. They're really cute. They have long necks. They don't waddle. They mm. run. They actually run. Um, but they're prolific egg layers. And I thought that's what I wanted ducks for was the duck eggs. And so I thought, okay, that's fine. So I get these ducks, I put them in the brooder. <laughs> oh, they are the messiest. They are so messy. You cannot imagine. Oh they, my goodness. Oh, they poop everywhere. There's water everywhere. They splash in the water. They throw it all over the place. I mean, every day with these ducks was like cleaning out soup out of the bottom of this brooder with wood chips and food and oh, oh my it was, goodness it was a mess they are a mess so I couldn't wait to get them out of the brooder as soon as it started getting a little warmer outside you I put them outside gone. yes yeah I, <laughs> I can't do this well as they've gotten bigger I've noticed that they're not standing upright and they don't have long necks okay. and they're turning white and they're not Indian runner ducks they're Pekin ducks they okay. are the big white traditional ducks that you see. Okay. Um, and so Pekin ducks lay eggs, which you can eat. And they're also like a top meat duck. And so okay. what we will do here with the ducks is we don't know how many are boys and how many are girls yet. Okay. Um, how I don't 
how can you t- i mean did you already learn about that how, like how can you so you can't tell when they're born so you have to wait or yeah you have to wait and i think you could probably examine them and find out i have not done that but i do know that the male ducks tend to get a curly tail they get curly tail feathers and oh. there's a few other characteristics that you can tell um they don't quack they they make a quieter noise the females are louder and they quack okay. a lot um, but we we don't need a bunch of male ducks around here, right? Because again, we no. don't need pets. We we're we're doing this to you know, yeah, so, to sustain yourself. Yeah, to sustain ourselves. So if uh, if we have a bunch of males, then we'll process those out, and the okay. females will keep for eggs, and we'll keep probably one male because I would love to incubate my own eggs um, mm-hmm. eventually, and so. Um, I have to get an incubator and then we can hatch out ducks and chickens for ourselves right from, from eggs. That's the next, yeah, that's my next adventure, hopefully. Oh my goodness. This is just, it has been such a process, such a journey. Yes. There's a lot that is involved. You know, you have to, it's not just getting the animals. You have to house them. You have to Mm -hmm. have places for them. You have to, so I've, I've learned about building fences and building structures Mm -hmm. for them to sleep in and, you know, moving things around. It's, it's been a huge learning curve, but it's been fun. Every step Mm -hmm. of the way has been so much fun. That's so, and your mom, I know, I love your mom. Um, I know she helps you a lot, right? I mean, do you guys do all of it together or is there something that she doesn't really like to do or? Yeah. Some of it, you know, she comes out and she'll looks at the ducks or the chickens and, you know, things like that. She likes to save all the scraps for the pigs from the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's, you know, gone out and, you know, done stuff like that, but she always, you know, she gets a kick out of the animals and like seeing them and stuff. But, um, yeah, most of the, the workload, that's my job. So she, uh, she likes to watch them and stuff, but you know, she doesn't go out and do all the feeding and watering and that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's, um, that's cool though. But I, I mean, at least you have the help and I think, you yeah. know, but you know, you're doing most of the learning and the, you know, bulk of the work yourself though. But um, yeah. when we said, when I said, you know, you're doing this to sustain yourself, um, have you seen a difference in the financial aspect of being in Clinton Township and having to go grocery shopping, you know, um, there, you know, the housing, all of that stuff versus now being up North and doing yeah. all this work? So there, there are things that are higher and things that are lower mm-hmm. price wise in both areas. So okay. um, I feel right now there's been a lot of, um, you know, we're putting a lot of money and time and effort into everything right now mm-hmm. without any real payoff yet because okay. it's still so early. Yes. So eventually what I'm hoping is that when we start, when we get the pigs processed, when the ducks start laying eggs, when the, you know, the bigger, the littler chickens mm-hmm. get bigger. And when we do all that, we'll start to see more of a payoff there. Um, but that was another reason that I felt passionate about this was not only are things out of stock, and, and unable, you're unable to find, you know, chicken Mm -hmm. at the grocery store for an entire week, maybe, or, uh, you know, they're all out of bacon or bacon has gone up to, you know, $10 for a package Mm -hmm. of bacon. Um, I, it's nice to know that, you know what, if you have that already, if you're creating that, if you're making, feeding those animals and caring for those animals and able to process them, it, you, you really could have just a never ending supply of that, all of that on your own. Yes. And while the upfront costs can be overwhelming, eventually, I think you probably end up saving in the long run. Yeah. And you're getting, you're getting better quality products that you know, where they've been, what they're eating, mm-hmm. how they, how their lives have been, because, you know, factory farmed animals do not live very happy lives. Yes. They're yes. not, you know, they're not treated well. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't get to see the sun they don't get to Mm -hmm. graze. They don't get to, to do that. So. Yes. Yes. And I think, I think a lot of people as you start questioning, you know, like um, I was just talking to somebody that made a documentary uh, being the documentary being and becoming, and I don't know if you ever, did you ever watched it? 
No, no, uh -uh. it's a it's a great documentary about, you know, self-directed education. And she just did, it was a it was a wonderful documentary of wondering of asking the questions. And I think once you begin with questioning about, you know, is this what's right for a family? I think you pass on to different areas. And then her mm -hmm. and I talked about the food. That was a big one. You know, when yeah. you start wondering and questioning, like, where um where does my food come from? And yeah you know, it was it was it produced, you know, in healthy ways, you know, I'm not eating something that's completely, you know, filling me up with different, I don't know, chemicals or whatever. But um, that's just a wonderful peace of mind. Yes, it is. It is. And and like I said before, you know, as, as sad as it might be, you know, to, mm -hmm. to kind of it's let go of those animals, I personally feel better that they lived a great life that yes. they were cared for, that they were happy, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, they, they didn't, you know, live these miserable lives and tight quarters. They got to roam, they got to, you know, mm -hmm. enjoy the, the sun and the grass and all of that. That makes mm -hmm. me feel better about, about, um, you know, butchering them and, and consuming mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes, uh, that makes, yeah, because you want to care for the, for, for them and, you know, you want to keep doing that. And as you do that, do you find that a lot of people in your area are also kind of doing that or is there like different or people still, you know, how far is your, is the grocery store for you? So we have a grocery store in town, um, mm -hmm. a smaller grocery store. They don't have everything it's not okay. you know it's not a big box store like a walmart or a meyer or anything mm -hmm. like that it's just a um local grocery store okay. the closest um the closest meyer walmart things like that are it's a 45 minute drive oh, to any a, place like that yeah that's a um, big that's a long drive to just you know yeah yeah and of course in town with the smaller store the prices are higher because mm -hmm. it's a you know family owned smaller place. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of people in this area farm, there's a, there's okay. a lot of dairy farms, there's beef. Um, we get a cow, we get a, a cow every mm -hmm. year from yes. friends of ours that, that raise beef. Um, and you know, other, other places, other people, you know, raise goats and lambs and pigs and all of that. Um, but that's, so it's not unheard of what we're doing here. It's much yes. more common than it's much more than common. Yeah. Yes. Do you still come down to the city often? I know we haven't been able to see each other, but do you come down often? Not often, but we have come down a few times. We um have come down for some events and then we came down um to buy a vehicle, buy a new car. We, I know, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yes, that was exciting. Um and you know, here and there we'll we'll have some other things to do down there. But um we have family and friends down there, so it's not yes. like we'll never never come down but what's so. the feeling when you come down here like what's the feeling you know yeah it's different it's different I didn't expect to feel um you know we moved here in August so it hasn't mm -hmm. been that long but honestly I get it now like what my parents have said in the past about not wanting to be down down there it's it, there's so yes. much traffic and congestion and there's so many people everywhere and it's almost a feeling you you can feel it. You can feel the tension mm -hmm. when you get yes. to a certain point in the drive. Yes. Um, up here, it's everything's kind of spaced out. It's slower. It's, you mm. know, um, it's more private, I guess. You mm -hmm. don't have people all over all the time. It's it's just a completely different feeling. Yeah. Um I can, I can honestly relate to those feelings. And even I was in, um, I was in Chicago not too long ago and I don't live, you know, our area is still a city, you know, it's the city per se, but we, I went to a bigger city, right? Yeah. Like it was, this was like yeah. the middle of Chicago and I was walking and there was not one tree in sight for one. Yeah. And yeah. then there was a man walking a dog. He was walking uh, a Husky and even the Husky looks sad. Like he, I mean, literally, like I was like looking at the dog and I'm like, something doesn't look right. And I just, I kept staring, but even the dog didn't, didn't look right. And I'm like, something's missing here. And then I came home and like I said, they're not, you know, we have plenty of trees in our area and stuff like that, but it's still a city. It's not like Annie has a beautiful, beautiful forest, like, you know, behind you. And it was just, mm -hmm. it, it's so calm and so peaceful but I came home and even with a few trees that I had 
in you know yeah. in my backyard I felt better and yeah. I'm like I can't imagine not being around you know the nature and the beauty and the trees and the and the vibes and the energy you know that yeah. you're describing and I can you know that it's different in the city versus you know in a more yeah. you know area that doesn't have as many buildings so and I think it just depends on what season of life you're in because mm -hmm. when I was younger totally yes that feeling that that vibe that you know energy of the city that's all I wanted oh that's my what goodness I wanted. yes and I, yes you know I think as we get older we we just things change, mm -hmm. you know, you just mm -hmm. want to slow down. You want to have some space. You want to have some privacy. You don't, yes. you know, you yes. don't necessarily thrive on that anymore. Exactly. And, um, and I love that you guys listen to that. So how is, um, how is your husband like, um, doing, because I know he had to change his job. He went to the same company where, but a smaller office. How is yes. he doing with that transition? It's been a big change for him. He, mm -hmm. um, you know, he is, is happy up here, but mm -hmm. he is also, he, he likes the city. He lo likes that energy. He likes that feeling. Mm -hmm. He's not, um, he thinks the animals are, are, are cool. He's not big into the farming thing. So, okay. um, it's been much more exciting, I think for me than for mm -hmm. him. Okay. Um, and then his job has been, it's been difficult. He's went from first shift to third shift. That's hard. Um, mm -hmm. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a truck driver. So he's driving all night long. Yes. Uh, and he doesn't get a whole lot of time off. So, um, you know, he's, he's working like 14 hour days. Wow, so it's yeah. been, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's been tough for him, but he does enjoy um, up here. You know, we, we like to do target shooting. We like to ride four wheelers. He likes mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So he is mm -hmm. able to to do some of that on the weekends. And, um, he gets, he is kind of, I think he's amused by the farm. Mm -hmm. He does, he does think the animals are funny and he's enjoying watching, you know, the, the babies get bigger, the ducks, the chicks and stuff like that. Um, so he's coming around. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do, do it more. So, yes, I love that. And I mean, you know, that just talks to, you know, meeting everyone, everyone where they're at. Right. And then yeah. just making sure working together, for whatever works for your family and everyone is different and yeah. um and understanding that that our life is not should not look like yours and your life should not look like ours it's it's yeah. embracing what what it's authentic for everyone so i love that Absolutely. um yeah. so before we wrap up so what would you say to people that have this dream you know that have this dream and you know, and are just thinking about it and it just keeps coming back to them. What would you say, Pete, uh, words of wisdom? Because I know you have many. Well, I think if you're called to anything, if you're, if it's really, if it's not just a fleeting thought, if mm -hmm. it's something that keeps coming back to you and that doesn't have to just be, you know, farming or this kind of lifestyle, but really anything, if it keeps coming back to you, if it keeps popping up, if you keep thinking yes. about it, if you keep you figure it, trying to figure out mm -hmm. how to make it work. Just start, just mm -hmm. start anywhere. Take the smallest thing that you can do right now with what you have with what and, you have. Yes. Yeah. And start it and then go from there. So I was blessed enough to have family property that I could do this on because mm -hmm. the, that was the big roadblock for me. I could not afford to purchase land at the time, mm -hmm. you know, and place where I was, that's really difficult. So if you live in a city and you, you aren't able to move to a more rural area, but you want to start, you know, farming, start with a garden, start mm -hmm. with a window garden, start with, um, container gardening, anything, anything like that. And then, um, you know, check with your, with your laws and your rules of your city, see what you can have for, animals. Uh, mm -hmm. you might be surprised some, some places, you know, allow more than others and, mm -hmm. um, go from there and just start small and, and keep building, Yes, you know, when opportunities present themselves, take advantage of them. If you, if you see a fixer upper and you, it's got acreage and that's really what you want to do, you might have to sacrifice, you know, the house for the land that happens a lot. And, mm -hmm. um, just do what you can do. And if it's really, uh, something that you're passionate about, don't give up on it. Just keep yeah. going. Oh my and goodness. Also, 
talk to everybody, learn as much as you possibly mm-hmm. can. Yes. yes. Join groups, you know, find, yes. find books, do everything that you can, you can do. Yes. Because that's so beautiful because so many people are willing to share their story and to share their learning groups. I know I'm always yeah. trying to, you know, whatever I have learned in whether it's traveling, unschooling, you know, real estate, or, you yeah. know, my little garden that I have done, you always want someone else to, to not, you know, to take your nuggets of information, right? What, this yeah. is what I've learned. It may help you, you know, yeah. everyone's oh, yeah. always- people are more than willing to help mm-hmm. people get excited about what they're into and they want to share that information yes. with you. Yes. And speaking of knowledge, let's just, I usually wrap up with this question, but I just want to touch on uh, the knowledge that you got from your, you know, that you're getting from your mom. And I think, you know, and from other people that have been around longer than we have, because yeah. they have gone through so much experience. And I feel like we are losing that as we continue to rely on, you know, perhaps grocery stores or just the easier way for us to do things. You know, I mm-hmm. I don't think anything is easy. You just have to yeah. always keep trying and just like finding out what works for you. But can you just talk about the knowledge that you have gotten from your, you know, from your mom, from your dad, you know, um, yes. uh, that can, has helped you in this journey of Absolutely. having the farm? So my parents have always been kind of into, um, the being more Mm self-sufficient. They um, have always had a garden. Um, we did raise other animals. We had the chickens when I was a kid, Mm -hmm. but we did have meat rabbits. When I was a kid, we had pigs a few times. Um, we had horses, but you know, obviously those were just for fun. Mm -hmm. But, um, the only reason, like we had talked about the rabbits processing the rabbits, the only reason I would even think of doing that is because I grew up watching my dad you know, Mm -hmm. hunt and, um, you know, skin and gut and butcher and do all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. None of that is, um, taboo or mysterious to me because I grew up watching him do that. And then on, on the other end, my mom is the person in, in the kitchen doing the vacuum sealing, doing mm-hmm. the freezing, doing the canning. Mm-hmm. Um, she cans tomatoes, peaches, green beans. She makes jam. She's done that my whole life. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there that's always just kind of been a way of life for them. And yes. it's always been normal to be around. Um, they, and they've, they've never been afraid to try different things with things mm-hmm. with, with that. Um, they canned mushrooms one time, they got a bunch of fresh mushrooms and they're like, what do we do? Okay, let's learn how to can them. So they did. And I love uh, that. yeah, my mom can- has canned meat. She's canned um, soups and stews and things like, I mean, mm-hmm. just stuff that you wouldn't even think about, but um, she knows how to do all of that. And she's, she's just always done mm-hmm. it. So yes. none of that has seemed really is really foreign to me. And, um, and it's, it comes from watching them and and Mm -hmm. being around that background you know yeah so yeah uh, a lot of the interest and uh motivation comes from keeping those those Mm -hmm. traits alive too because I want to know about them Mm -hmm. as well yeah it's super super important I think it and then it says you know it speaks to you know raising children takes does take a village and that village has very powerful uh moments very powerful wisdom to share with them and and the kids will just take whatever resonates with them at the moment and then come back to it and then take a little more and come back to it you know nothing has to be forced nothing has to be um delivered you know at a certain time it's just when they're ready to take it in they will and they're just building this beautiful foundation of helping care for their family and, you know, just being self-sufficient, you know, uh, which is a beautiful way to live in my opinion. Yeah. So I oh, agree. my dear Annie, thank you so much uh, for being oh, here with us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored that you would think of me and, uh, you know, let me talk your ear off. And- <laughs> oh, I just love it. We can even talk more though, but I just, for, um, just as we close up this time for, for good, like for good, um, <laughs> Can you tell us where to find you? I know. Uh, can you tell us where to find you and um, and how to follow your journey? Because it's about to get even more interesting than, you know, it's just going and I love it. So 
Yes. And I'm going, I, I have been slow on uh, creating, you know, content and documenting mm-hmm. things in a way where most, where other people can find me other than the people that are closest to me, but I'm going to get better at that. So I have, mm-hmm. um, I have a blog page that I've had for a long time, long before I started any of this. And okay. uh, you can find that on Facebook and it's called just me and him and them. Okay. And that's on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And um, I also have a YouTube channel. It's Y E O L V Yo L V. And um, I have a few videos up there and I'll be putting up more. And then eventually what I would like to do is do some tutorials on some of the things that we've talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, even though some of them might be graphic, like processing the animals, things yes. like that. I think it is, um, important to Very. learn that mm-hmm. and, um, maybe not even, you know, at maybe do a few milder ones, just about packaging meat mm-hmm. and, you know, getting it prepared to freeze <clears throat> and then also do some dispatching videos later on. I um, love that. Canning, gardening, all of, all of the stuff that's, mm-hmm. that's coming up. So. Please do because uh, we every, everyone needs it. I think everyone is like curious about this information, and I think as people start thinking about uh you know different things, they're turning to this knowledge that has been around for a long time, but sometimes it has gotten like lost, and we have lost the connection with yeah. it. So, um, so for anybody that would like to connect with Annie, we'll have all of those links in the you know in the description of the video, and then we'll have them available for you as well in the podcast version, so you can listen to. Annie. Annie, if you cannot, if you're not able to watch the video, um, and if you have any questions for Annie, you can post them on her YouTube channel or follow her page and just ask, um, ask, ask away, ask please. Away. You yes. know, <laughs> she's amazing. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Annie, for being thank here with you, us Julia. and sharing your journey. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Um, Please remember that your time is very, very precious. Please make it count and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Annie. See you later. Bye. Thanks.